I think Chowie's story so far has been a bit of a tragedy, and a lot of it hasn't really been his own doing. He's definitely someone who uh, has faced a lot of challenges throughout his professional career. They even have this term for it, which is called Chowie's Curse. Chowie even got to play in the World Championships, and I think that's because of his curse. When he was on Singapore Sentinels, he failed to make Worlds twice. And then when he was performing extremely well in LMS, he, he was hit by the ban. I guess it's not really his fault sometimes, but it's just whenever you see the sort of things happen to him, you just feel bad for him. Winning and losing is part of the game, but I think Chowie's story is definitely the saddest. And Chowie just never got the opportunity to really shine on the international stage. And he always had that drive to just get there, but unfortunately, through one mishap or another, it just never came to be. There are currently two mid laners, one is Westor, the other is Chawi. So the reason AHQ got Chawi in the first place was because they wanted someone who had a large champion pool for international tournaments. Definitely one of the weaknesses that was identified in AHQ ever since they represented the LMS in last season's world was Westor's place now. Well, if you could shut him down, you'd have a really good firm grip on AHQ. Westor throws down the hourglass, Faker shuts on down. What they wanted to do with Chawi and Westor was very unique. There was this very famous strategy where it was uh, Westor blue side and then Chawi red side. To say that Westor is Spear and Choi is the shield. The representation, I think, is quite iconic. I think at the start of Split, it worked out really well. Towards the end, we started seeing that Choi had some of his own limitations in the champion pool as well. I think Choi definitely had a huge effect on Westor. And you can see that pressure really pushing Westor to, to be something that he previously wasn't. <laughs> When he was coming on into this team, what a lot of people understood was Chawi was here to replace Westwood. So instead of being a replacement, he became an option. And now, ASQ, in the off season, they have to ponder which option do they go for. I think it's good for AHQ, but it's definitely worrying for Chaoyi. If Westor can move into these other roles, then what's the point of keeping Chaoyi? back to the gaming house and I'm super excited to see the guys again, especially Bora. Missing out on the finals, missing out on MSI was, uh, was tough, I think, for, for, for the team. So getting back into things now feels good. I haven't seen Bora for eight months now, if not more. I mean, last time we saw each other was when we lost against Cool Tigers, and I guess everyone was just really saddened and we split up. Hello? Oh. Hey. 
<laughs> Feels like a last one. How are you? Oh, you're so done. Oh, wow. Nice to see you again. Like, how was the holidays? I'm oh, good. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to go to the fake that anymore. No. <laughs> you see, it's like fun. <laughs> They're like brothers. Is it that bad? <laughs> he was jelly. He was really jealous. <laughs> no, it's, it's good to be back. Uh, seeing Martin for the first time was really nice. I was, I actually miss him, and I was really happy to see him again. Uh, always feels good. It's always nice to see a friend again. Um, going back to Fnatic does feel like going back home. Bora is really special for the team because of the leadership skills he brings. He's come back and he, he, he's going to help me and help my team. Uh, to go back to what we were before. So that kind of made me realize and also made me cherish my upcoming time with Bora more. I'm My brothers are very, very close. We're just one year difference, and we are kind of like each other's best friends since young. I'm his very first friend. Many times when me and the, the other brother fight, then he, he would come in and be the mediator. He's the one that makes everything much better. Gameboy那些我们都是没有 the bullying actually made him a much stronger person. He's more resilient and he's able to persevere stronger. Sometimes we just we exercise together. <laughs> 
So this is like a bonding session for me and him. Every time when I'm back in Singapore, we'll come down. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm damn, damn tired yeah. from all the training. He'll be like, oh, come on, man, let's go down and work out. It's always good to have someone who wants to do the same thing as you. Because my house is not very rich, so we don't have a phone from young to young. So we have to go out to play a car. Sneaking out and playing computer games was really what made us very happy. We often tell our mother to go to the gym, to run, 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 to run. When we started playing, he was saying to my brother to go out. But we have a feeling. We have to go to the shopping mall to get a gate. 啊，我们两夫妻一定会去走走看啦、啊，看他有没有在哪里。有，我们也是偷偷望看看而已啦。到久了之后，就说：“哎呀，只要你们没有学坏的话，出去没有乱掺人哦，给你玩哦。”他们回来就是好像很满足感啦，<笑>很开心的。哦，翻身？哦，你没有。没事哦。<笑>所以我觉得，如果之前没有一直这样跑去打网咖，我应该也不会在现在在打职业。My mom and dad, they they were not so keen on us playing video games and focusing on computer games so much when we were growing up. 其实一开始跟我父母说我要打比赛，我要当一个职业选手，他们是很不赞同的。新加坡玩电玩不容易了，而且父母大部分的父母都不同意了。He started playing really small competitions, started winning them. I guess he really wanted to compete and know where he stands. So that was why he ventured into all these competitions and make a name for himself. Singapore is kind of strict. You can't really just say no. Oh no, I'm not gonna go army. Everyone has to do it. So they were looking for ten players. I was one of the best players in the team. But they didn't put me in the ten players in the list. Because they thought I was a new player who was coming in. 所以应该会变烂。So it's actually a very, very big thing that I think people often overlook. They say, "Oh, you know, just finish your national service and then come back and play." Actually, we've seen that story before. We've had good, good Singaporean players try and do that, and it doesn't work out for them. 通常当兵的选手都会变很烂，因为当兵就是两年，然后练习的时间非常非常少，就因为有点。很失望，然后又有点生气，所以我就把自己变得很强，就跟自己说，比赛我一定要把他们打爆，就我一定要加入这一队。然后当时就找了四个选手，然后结果在比赛打赢了新加坡先锋，然后他们终于肯找我。We realized that Choi had a great potential, even though he was still in national service. Hi everyone, my name is Sing Lee. People know me for Choi. Yeah, and I play the AD carry for Singapore Sentinels. 我每天就是六点多就起床，坐公车到当兵的，下班后就会赶去新加坡先锋，然后不管是团练还是准备比赛，然后都会练到十点，所以回到家就差不多就十一点多，但是回到家我就觉得练习量有点不够，所以我都会练到两三点，然后就去睡三个小时左右，然后。又起来，就差不多这样子过了两年，所以我自己就一直跟自己说，能牺牲多少就牺牲，就坚持下去。因为我觉得自己非常很想当就是世界上最强的选手。I really wish to represent Southeast Asia and do our region proud。我在当兵的时候就是有被拍，就是被当 poster boy， 就。觉得还蛮好笑的，所以每次我们在 Parade Square 的时候跑步啊，不然就走路，都会看到我的脸很大挂在那边。Back in the days when Choi was in Singapore Sentinels, it was a team that was very exciting and innovative. 
we were like two tiers above all the other teams and basically no one could come near us. Choi was pretty much our star player because he was playing very well. He actually carried Singapore Sentinels in a number of games. A lot of videos were made showing his muscles. He's like the poster boy for Singapore Sentinels. Every time I see him, I'm just half expecting him to be like half naked to show off his abs and his well-toned biceps and triceps and the full package. In his Singapore Sentinels, it's very clear that his strength is not able to keep up with him. If you really want to go like greater heights, you really have to get out of Singapore. In 2014, when I joined TPA, it's because at the time, 在新加坡先锋就成绩都没，我们都没得到很好的成绩。We were very sad to see him go because it was definitely a big blow to our chances, but it was definitely a right step for Chowee and for Singapore in general. So in that sense, it was sad, but it was also definitely a a, a great point of pride and hope. 当时他们准备要去明星赛，然后也有准备去打世界赛，然后也跟我说会让我打先发。刚听到这消息，我很开心。然后我跟我家人讨论了很久，很舍不得家庭。但是我父母，尤其是我妈，就一直说：“去吧，去吧，就这种机会不是每个人都得得到。”我们每个都都支持他去，因为他的心气啊。这种机会不是人人有嘛。He had to just uproot himself from Singapore to, to move over to, to a foreign country, which I, I don't even think he has been to Taiwan before this. Li Xiang Bei Jing to chase a dream is a really fun thing, and even to chase a dream is a very great thing. Leaving my family is very difficult. Because I can't see my family every day. I just... 过来台湾的，然后结果没有让我上场，就因为有另外一个中路。The hardest part was probably sitting out on the bench when he arrived here in Taipei. He was the mid laner behind Morning. At that time, the coach decided to play Morning instead of Chowee. He came to the Taipei Assassins in hopes that he could be able to play internationally, and the Taipei Assassins did make it, but they made it with Morning. They didn't make it with Chowee playing. 当时超仪非常非常靠近世界的舞台，但是超仪的个人能力跟团队其实一直都配不太起来。我来台湾是因为追求梦想，然后追求梦想当然最重要的是能上场。嗯，当时就是一直在下面看他们打比赛，我没机会上场，所以就觉得自己就浪费了一年。当时就非常失望，感觉有点被。骗过来台湾。然后二零一五教练跟经理有答应我，就是一定会让我上场，一定会让我先发。所以我就一直很把握。然后其实有好几个礼拜都有得到MVP。结果就被禁赛，然后TPA最后需要拿候补进来打。Chaoyi was banned in 2015 for ELO boosting that was when he was on the Taipei Assassins. League of Legends is a super competitive game and a lot of people play to get ranks. And sometimes if you can't make that rank, you ask someone to do it for you. And that's basically what ELO boosting is. It's paying money to achieve something that is not actually yours. That's because in 2013, I said that I didn't want to play for a long time in Singapore Sin Fong. 因为我要去读书，要去读私人的学校，非常贵，学费非常高。然后我也不想一直连累我父母，所以我就想说，哎、欸，其实我可以帮人家打账号，可以赚一点钱。因为反正我都没要打职业，当时是差不多打几场，然后可以赚差不多一百块吧。然后我就去帮我朋友打，结果就帮他打后，他就一年多都没把钱还给我。结果打后，然后。TPA 也有找我，然后就去 TPA， 所以当时我们其实看起来是非常有机会去世界赛。我们本来可以打进四强，但是最后前几年的代打事件被挖出来，然后被禁赛半年，所以我就失去了一次机会。I, 
I just wish that professional players didn't do it because I think it inevitably does mar a little bit of the reputation of League of Legends as a professional sport. You get one chance, you have the most basic skill. I think it's like that. Your duty is to win matches, not to win medals and then get money. I felt very sorry for the whole TPA team. 我是他们的队长，也是他们的算是他们的大哥，所以大家都有点靠我，觉得自己很对不起，就是我自己家人，因为他们都一直支持我。他说爆了，我感觉他很伤心啊。对我们来讲，我觉得是没有错啦，因为他都还没有没有跟人家签约的时候做的事情啊。失败很多次吧，然后要成功的时候又发生这种事情，就对我打击真的是非常非常大。就是 FB 有发文，就是关于这件事件。I'm sorry for disappointing everyone supporting me out there all this time. I'm even more sorry for letting my team down, including my managers, coach, translator. I never expect this to happen, and I'm the same or even more disappointed than anyone else. Sorry. The return of the captain, obviously a huge storyline coming into Fnatic into the, the summer split stress. How much can and will he change? When Reckless and Yellow Star were together as a bottom lane duo, all the prizes they went through, all the great results they had in their career, obviously the World Championship semi-final most recently. They have a lot of history between them. A lot of aggression coming out from Fnatic. Looking at his goal to Maxwell, who got the blows land. Third friend comes in, first blood to Reckless. With the flank coming in with the Fates core, he's gonna be flashing away, but it is useless as Reckless will follow him down. Land a bit of damage in return, but an easy kill to Fnatic. 29 minutes into this game, and they crush Giant's dreams on the Nexus itself. Two and zero, three points on the week. Everyone's thinking that Yellow Star coming back and being reunited with Reckless. The belief is really that he's going to come back and be the glue that gets everything back together. Because Fnatic not being at the top, not winning, not going to MSI is honestly something that was out of the ordinary. However, I think it'll be very hard for them to get to the World Championship. I think, even though I feel like it's great that Boris is back, so going into Summer Split, I'm, I'm really excited to see what we can accomplish together. But then again, as with everything else, other teams have made improvements as well, and it's, it's always a tough journey to, to surpass them and make it all the way. We have a legacy which was the perfect split, and we have all eyes on us for now, and I really want to perform uh, like last year, I hope that I'll be able to bring the, the missing part to the puzzle and we just want to do better. We spent the whole of the start of the year explaining how good this team was. They innovated the meta many times. It looked like they were playing a different style of League of Legends to any team around the world. Let's see if they've got the new playbook because we've jumped to patch 6.10. So much has changed since MSI, and if you're going to look to any team in 2016 to show you something new, it's the Rocks Tiger. Yes. Here we go. Teleport coming in from Spam. Will already get spotted. It's going to be matched by a TP coming in here from Kube from the top side. Ambition looking like he's going to be the target. Spam gets locked up, though, by Samsung, and he's going to be the first one to fall. Rocks cannot collapse in time. But Spam way too far forward, and No Man's Land cannot sustain the damage. Being output by Ruler, he's going to be the first one to fall. Snap, oh wow, misses the jump of waters. Under Ambition still trying to chase into the kill, but Ruler is there. Other you have to say, mechanical misplay, specifically from the guy who we put next to Faker as the real star of the Rocks Tigers and real star of the LCK and Smep. Now Smep is in the backside trying to do something, but they cannot stop the bleeding. Rocks Tigers lose 2 0 to Samsung who start this season off with a bang. And it was to call this Samsung a top team in the LCK. I was surprised to see them do so well. They eventually fell away, but were so precariously close to making it to playoffs. Good performance from them here, and everyone looks pretty out of it on the side of the Rocks Tigers. <laughs> Oh, 
썸머 시작이 좀 저한테는 많이 안 좋았었거든요. 삼성전에서 굉장히 이제 저의 플레이가 굉장히 안 좋았거든요. 일단 저는 이제 좀 많이 기분이 많이 안 좋고 그러면 이제 좀 집으로 가는 편이에요. 이상하게 부모님 보면은 눈물이 막 나오더라고요. 목표는 아직도 올해를 락스 타이거즈의 해로 만드는 거고요. 来台湾后会比较常来拜拜，是因为。就来台湾后觉得自己可能运气比较差，就事情都比较不顺。通常来拜不只是为了自己拜，还有就是为了家人。这一季开始会由西门先上，因为我就是放假这几个礼拜，会发生太多事情，然后就得一直出国办一些事
就是加入 A H U， 就是希望能打进世界赛，能打出好的成绩。对于世界赛很期望，意义太多了。呵呵如果拿到冠军，就是对自己的报答吧。就是我自己努力这么久，还拿不到冠军的话，自己会很失望的。如果今年世界赛 A H Q 有进，然后我是没就是没上先发的话，我还是会继续努力。就可能是看他们团练，然后他们需要什么就帮助他们什么，或者西门觉得西门那里可以加强，我就会去帮助他。我如果没上场，当然是会很失望，应该会崩溃。I think for him to have、uh, this sort of resolve to keep going, even though he has been hit with so many things over and over again, it definitely says a lot about his character. That kind of determination is is just incredible, and that is why he has the respect of every single one in Singapore. Chow is a very, very, very impressive player. There are no other players who have the same attitude. 他不怕辛苦啦，他的心气他不怕辛苦，他怎么累他还是努力。I think what keeps him going is really that his passion for the game, his duty to want to do well, his responsibility towards the family。就像如果我在外国比赛，我姐都会可能去拍拍我爸妈在看我比赛的照片给我看，然后就很感动，就会更想打很好给他们看，就是让我父母骄傲。起初不懂啊，不懂我都不懂，你们在玩什么？慢慢慢慢学一点呢，到现在还是不不大懂啊。他在新加坡玩的时候，我们也是有去看，可是我们都看不懂，啊，只是看到人家啊，我们这种。之前我出国比赛，就是可能比赛是我们的早上四五点，就是我父母也会起来，就是为了看那比赛。We never expect our parents to be so into this gaming thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very touching. Because at the beginning, when I gave up, I didn't want to play. It was my parents who told me to keep playing. I just hope that the rest of 2016 will be kinder to him, and hopefully, he'll be able to make goals. I just hope that the rest of 2016 will be kinder to him, and hopefully, he'll be able to make goals. I want to see this guy succeed because he really represents a bit of all of us. If he wins the World Cup, we of course. 替他开心嘛，好像这一次就好，哎，我们看到、啊、真的是可惜。这是他最想的心愿。呃，那个那个时候真的是很开心，真的是很开心，因为他这是他梦寐以求的嘛。我们也是希望他可以去了。超宇这个名字，如果要说有一个意思的话，我觉得应该可以说是永不放弃的意思。跌倒过蛮多次的，但是我一直都没放弃，一直都在爬起来。就相信会有一个美好的结，就是 ending 吧。<笑>